Ladies and gentlemen, I want you guys to take a look at this little boy's face because it just doesn't get very much more innocent than this. I believe that children are innocent. Children should be protected and we should advocate for our children first. They should always be our number one priority, okay? That's why I say the things that I say and I fight in the manner in which I do to get people to really understand that we got to start taking better care of our children. Y'all can tell, even with that baby's face right there, it looks like he has scratches on his face and bruising. This particular baby so-called disappeared. And I'm going to tell you guys, I, I, I don't know how y'all feel about this, and I'm going to warn you guys. I'm going to say some things, and I'm going to use some language that you may or may not like, okay? So if you can't handle that, I understand that if you need to exit my video, okay? But let me say this, because I need to be really honest. I believe that the responsibility and the onus should fall on the parents in all of these situations, biological mother, biological father. But the dynamic that we have going on in the United States of America is that we know that the majority of our children, even outside of the black community, even in white communities, Latin communities, Asian communities, a lot of communities are starting to fall into the American way. Our way has really kind of misled everyone because everyone sees America as the leaders, right? As far as culture, as far as a lot of things. But that is one trend that is horrible and I really think that we need to retract it and do something different, okay? Because we're not bringing children into these households with love, with respect, with a plan, right? I, I, I've done it myself. And shout out to my daughter's mother. I feel like we've done good so far we still have so much work to go because we we are raising a teenager and you guys know it just gets more challenging as we go we got a lot more things to worry about okay but i know a lot of parents out there a lot of people out there even the people in the chat can relate to what i just said okay we're not bringing our children in the most conducive situations but let me tell y'all what really sucks about this situation Police in Cheyenne, Wyoming, and I think this is probably the first story I've ever done out of Wyoming, but they are investigating after a missing toddler was found dead in a trash dumpster. I'm going to repeat that. This little boy went missing, but he was found in a trash dumpster. Like, when I read that title, I said, how does that even happen? Like, were you not around this kid? Like, like was the kid at a babysitter? Like, were you not at home? Like, was you, was, was he with your boyfriend? Like, what happened? And I feel like whoever is the custodial parent in most situations, which is the biological mother, by default, dads usually don't get custody. That's the way that it works, right? So if mothers have custody, and I want to give a shout out to all the good mothers out there. I know y'all are working hard. I know you, a lot of y'all are trying, okay? So don't let this mean that I'm getting on to the good ones. I'm only talking about the ones that this applies to. But I feel like we all have to do better. We all have to do our part. If you are the custodial mother, the custodial parent, not only is that a great reward for you to be a parent, for you to solely raise that kid and mold that kid in the image that you see, but it comes with great responsibility. And I'm sorry, I just don't think a mother is a good mother. If you lose track of your child. Anybody disagree with that? I'm going to say it again. I do not believe that a mother, this mother in this situation is a good mother. If you lose track of your child and you can't tell the police where your damn child is like, like, I, I don't get how that even happens. I think that that is a indicator of a bad mother. You guys know I have a t-shirt that says hashtag babies for benefits. And again, if I see you guys typing that in, in chats and stuff like that, y'all can always show me some love because that's a hashtag that comes from the AFC. Hashtag babies for benefits. These people only have these children for the benefits that they can get off of these kids, no matter what it is whether it's some love, whether it's food stamps, whether it's Section 8, whether it's car vouchers, whether it's WIC, whether it's just to control a man. That does not mean everybody, but it's too damn many women that that's the only reason that they're laying down with these ain't shit dudes. 
Fair enough so far? Let's move on. This little boy, this little smiling little boy, and I want y'all to look at his face. His name is Athian Rivera. He is two years old, and he was reported missing around 1 p.m. on Friday. In a post on Facebook, the Cheyenne Police Department said that the boy had last been seen on the 500 block of Desmond Drive wearing a short sleeve shirt and black sweatpants. His disappearance prompted an extensive search that involved multiple law enforcement agencies. The police department's public information officer, Alexandra Farkas, said at a news conference later on Friday afternoon. She said that the Laramie County Sheriff's Department, the Wyoming, the Wyoming Division of Criminal Investigation, as well as Cheyenne Fire and Rescue, were among the agencies that assisted the police department. A reverse 911 call was sent out to notify people within a half mile of where Rivera was last seen that the child was missing, she said. Rivera's name was also included in the national database for the missing children and social media was also used to try to locate the child. Now, for the people who might wonder if they uh, were able to put out a Amber Alert, that I'm not sure of. I did not find any evidence of that as of yet. Okay, so I don't know why Amber Alert wasn't put out. Here's the next part of the story. CPD, along with members of the Laramie County Sheriff's Office, the Wyoming Division of Criminal Investigation, Cheyenne Fire and Rescue, and Laramie County Fire District 2 were the ones that were involved in the search, according to the information shared by CPD Public Information Officer Alexandra Farkas, like I just said a moment ago. If I can get off of this ad, give me just a moment. Close this little ad. They also had a canine unit that was out looking around. But the search ended when the two-year-old little boy, and I want y'all to look at his face. Let's take a step back. This little boy right here. The search ended when they found this baby's body in a dumpster. That is not an accident. Dumpster and a baby in a dumpster is no accident. That baby was placed there on purpose. So the question would have to be, who put the baby there? I'm going to tell you guys also something that really bothered me. Initially, when I read this story and the reason why I gravitated to it, and I thank you guys who sent me the email with this particular story, because I, I can't credit who, I don't remember who sent it to me. But I read the story and I said, damn, that don't make any sense. And nobody has been arrested. Nobody is a suspect. And I'm going to tell you why that bothers me. Because mom should have known where the kid was and mom didn't even give them a possible suspect. Okay. Any additional information about the investigation will be released through the CPD's Facebook page, but we did actually get some information. Nicola Cordova and her daughter, Val Val Valeriana, were among those who participated. Cordova says she saw a Facebook post about the vigil and felt compelled to attend, even though she don't know the family. Being a mom, I can't imagine what they're going through, choking back tears, but I want them to know that we care and we're praying for them. When asked if she had a message for Athean's family, Cordova said, stay strong. He will live in the memories of everyone who knew him and loved him. And anybody that has additional information about this should call the dispatch center at 307-637-6525. Here's where the story takes a big turn. Y'all give me just a moment. The big turn in this story that we got an update from is now we have a suspect. Now I'm not saying that this particular person is responsible, but what I'm saying is that there's a lot of evidence that points to this individual. Let me see if I can get his face up on the screen. This guy right here, this is mom's boyfriend. And I'm not sure if many of y'all, cause I didn't put it in the title, were able to guess this, but this is mom's boyfriend. And this is also a thug. And I want you guys to remember that thug does not have a color attached to it. Thug is not a color. It's a behavior. Can y'all post that in the chat for me? Thug is not a color. It is a behavior. 
that is a thug that has a criminal history. There's a reason that I'm bringing that up. And there's a reason why this even further perturbed me about this particular story. Wyoming authorities made an arrest in connection with the death of the two-year-old Cheyenne boy who was found deceased inside of a dumpster. Now, according to the Cheyenne Police Department, that fool that y'all see on my screen is 27-year-old Wyatt Lamb, W-Y-A-T-T, -T, Wyatt Lamb, spelled traditionally L-A-M-B, was initially taken into custody on a warrant for failure to appear and parole violation. Let me say that again. Initially, he was taken into custody, not for the murder of the baby, okay? So let's, let's correct that. Not initially for the murder of the baby, but taken into custody on a warrant that he had for failure to appear in court and for a parole violation. So do any of you guys out there in the chat know what a parole violation is? Oh, that's right. That means that this silly ass dude was in jail for doing some illicit things that landed him in jail to do jail time. And then he had to basically sign over some uh, so, uh, an agreement to be able to get out of jail, to get parole, to be able to be let out. And what that does is now you are living outside of prison, but you have to live by a certain set of rules, right? He was on parole and this is mom's boyfriend. So I want you guys to bookmark that part of the story because it's very important. I promise you, we're gonna come back to it. We'll come back to it. Later on, he was charged with aggravated murder and child abuse. So here's what happened. They initially arrested him for the failure to appear and parole violation on this side. So while they were holding him, they did more investigation, more investigation. Next thing you know, you look up and now they were able to obtain charges and charge him with murder and aggravated child abuse against that two-year-old little boy that they found in a dumpster. Speaking of dumpsters, this dude looks like he actually crawled out of a dumpster, which is probably why they arrested him. Like he probably could have crawled out of a, a horse's ass, but I don't know that to be a fact, but I do know he looks like he crawled out of a trash can. I do know that. Speaking of white trash, let's keep going. Authorities found Atheon's body in a dumpster at an apartment complex in Cheyenne and the 400 block of Desmond Drive on Friday evening. The boy was last seen alive in the early hours of, on Friday in the 500 block of Desmond Drive. So far, little has been revealed surrounding the circumstances of the incident. Now, authorities have not yet divulged the cause and manner of death, but I'm gonna give you guys at least a little bit of an insight because that's what we're here for. This is an active investigation. Cheyenne police uh, spokesman said, there is no danger to the public. This story is developing. But now let's talk about something that's a little bit interesting. Let's focus on mom's boyfriend. And I'm not going to put mom's face and picture out there yet. Not yet. See if I can get his face back up here. Let me see. Okay, here it is. Cheyenne police have arrested 27-year-old Wyatt Lamb on a felony warrant for failure to appear and a misdemeanor warrant for a parole violation. They have forwarded an affidavit of probable cause to the Laramie County District Attorney supporting additional charges of aggravated child abuse and murder. But here's where it gets interesting. Lamb's previous arrest was on a felony charge of strangulation of a household member and two misdemeanor counts, one for property destruction and the other for interference with the police officer. Did you guys catch that? Felony charge of strangulation of a household member. 
Are you guys surprised? Y'all have been watching my channel long enough. Y'all shouldn't be so surprised that these people would go this damn far to be this damn stupid. The charges were filed only a year ago on February, February 29th of 2020, just last year. The warrants for failure to appear and parole violation are related to those charges. Now here's why I'm gonna get on to the mom. First and foremost, a background check. I don't wanna hear about the fact that mom didn't know that this dude was trash, right? Because a simple background check would have let you know that this dude had violent tendencies and he had already been to jail. He was on parole. And in order for this man to be at your house, he would have had to have got it approved by who? Who? His parole officer. And if this man was able to live with you and you didn't know that he was on parole, then something is wrong with you, mom. Yes? I'm gonna give you guys a little bit more information about this dude's criminal history. So let's go back to that photo right there. <coughs> In the early morning hours, Thursday, February 28th of 2020, Cheyenne police say that they were dispatched to a residence in retaliation, or excuse me, in relation to a report of domestic battery that they received. On scene, officers made contact with the accuser who alleged that the guy on the right-hand side, Wyatt, who alleged had been the attacker, excuse me, had attacked them after they had gotten into an argument. According to court documents, the accuser told police that Wyatt Lamb had struck them in the back of the head and then placed them in a chokehold from behind. Ah. The accuser said that the chokehold had restricted their ability to breathe, because that's what a chokehold does, like, yeah which caused them to lose consciousness for a few seconds. The abuse, the accuser also told police that when they regained their senses, Lamb began to strike them in the face. Talk about kicking somebody while they're down. During the altercation, the alleged victim also told police that Wyatt Lamb broke the screen on their cell phone. Police also said that they observed multiple injuries on the accuser, including ones that were consistent with strangulation. So is it okay that I call this dude a thug? Is that okay? Or does anybody have any qualms about that? I, I hope not. Lamb is accused of physically resisting the police officer's attempts to search him. It's further claimed that he continued to resist until he was placed in a full body restraint. The suspect was arrested and transported to the Laramie County Jail without further reported incident. All of those cited or arrested are presumed innocent until convicted in a court of law. Charges are subject to change following the official filings from the Laramie County District Attorney's Office. Now, I know that was a lot of information for you guys to, to, uh, to absorb, but again, they have arrested him. Initially, they didn't arrest him for the murder and uh, child abuse, but now that they have. So that's actually an official word from the police. Hashtag not my words. Let me give you guys the fair usage. It was only one news video because apparently only one news station bothered to talk about this story and us. Fair use. Federal law allows citizens to reproduce, distribute, or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, or video discs under certain circumstances without the authorization of the copyright holder. This is called fair use and is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody, which doesn't infringe of copyright under 17 U.S.C. 107. And matter of fact, um, we're going to talk about some more stuff here in a minute. If y'all want to see the screenshots of what the mom, the biological mom posted and deleted, let me know. I will show y'all those, those if y'all want to see them. Police in Cheyenne, Wyoming are still trying to figure out what led to a toddler's body being abandoned in a dumpster. Anthony and Rivera was found several hours after he was reported missing. Police have not said how the boy died. 
Now, police and firefighters conducted an extensive search Friday afternoon. After hearing of the missing toddler, they even used a reverse 911 call system to tell people within a half mile of his apartment complex to be on the lookout for him. As of Monday, notes of condolences and stuffed animals were attached to a chain link fence at the apartment complex where he was found. At the CBS 17 Digital Desk, I'm digital reporter Judith Ratana. Police in Cheyenne, Wyoming are still trying to figure out what led to a toddler's body being abandoned in a dumpster. Anthony and Rivera was found several hours after he was reported missing. Police have not said how the boy died. Now, police and firefighters conducted an extensive search Friday afternoon. After hearing of the missing toddler, they even used a reverse 911 call system to tell people within a half mile of his apartment complex to be on the lookout for him. As of Monday, notes of condolences and stuffed animals were attached to a chain link fence at the apartment complex where he was found. At the CBS 17 Digital Desk, I'm digital reporter Judith Ratana. All right. That's the only news video that was out there because apparently that's the only news station that cared to actually talk about this on TV, which is just beyond me. But let me ask you guys this question. Would you guys like to see how the biological mother responded on Facebook and then took down her posts and deleted them? How many of you guys want to see that? Matter of fact, where we're sitting at with the thumbs up. Let's see where we're at. We're at 347 thumbs up. If you guys can get us the 400 thumbs up, I will go ahead and actually show you guys the screenshots from the biological mother. So again, we only need about 50 people to click that thumbs up to help share this stream and let more people know that we're live. So click that thumbs up. So, okay, y'all are saying y'all do want to see the screenshots? Okay, I can do that. How about we start with... This first one, this is or was the mom's current Facebook page, okay? <clears throat> On this page, it says, uh, RIP, my perfect innocent son, Athian Emmanuel Rivera, you're my everything and I'm lost without you. Now, on the surface, that sounds like a very beautiful, heartfelt message from the mother, right? Very nice message from the mom. So I get it. I'm like, okay, cool. Not a big deal. But I got to dig into the mom's page and I found a few things. <coughs> and we'll get to talking about this other thing here in a minute. Let's take a look at this one. This is one of the screenshots from the mom's page. Let me see if I can make that a little bit bigger for you guys. I know some of you guys might have bad vision like I do. Maybe, maybe not. But this is from the mom's page on February the 20th, less than 72 hours ago. The mom said it almost feels as though they don't give, they don't, they don't even give you time to grieve. Fuck. I need you here, my tinykins. I'm getting things together for my son's funeral. Whatever you can give is appreciated. I'll give details about the service within a couple of days. So far, even though, you know, she used kind of some foul language in there, I think it's, you know, a little bit distasteful. Not so bad so far, right? But they do have a GoFundMe up. How about we take a look at that GoFundMe? Let me see if I can find that real quick. Did I put a screenshot of that GoFundMe? I thought I did. I normally do. I'm normally really good at... Yes, I did. Okay, okay. Oh, man. Oh, man. Okay. Y'all are going to find this interesting. How many GoFundMe's do y'all think they had? Let me ask that question. How many GoFundMe's do y'all think the family has? Do y'all think they had just one GoFundMe? Do y'all think they had 
no gun GoFundMe's because they had insurance on their child on their children? Or do y'all think they had multiple GoFundMe's? I just don't understand when murders happen to children, why are people so quick to jump on board and just start donating all this money and y'all don't even know what's going on? Let me show y'all the first GoFundMe. I want y'all to take a look at this. Let's go ahead and blow this up on the screen. This GoFundMe comes from one of the grandparents. Lily, Lillian's grandbaby. This GoFundMe asked for $10,000. They've already collected $2,829 from those nice suckers, I mean people down there. Ten thousand. You think that was bad? Guess what? That was a second GoFundMe. Can we get a hashtag babies for benefits in the chat? Let's take a look at this second GoFundMe while you guys type in that good old hashtag of ours. Hashtag babies for benefits. I love it when people give me appreciation for the hashtag that we created. Here's the second GoFundMe. The second GoFundMe is asking for $15,000. $15,000 and those nice suckers, I, I mean, those nice people down there at the bottom have donated $1,210 and they don't even know who was responsible for the murder of this kid. It could have been the mom. It could have been the mom and the boyfriend. We don't know. We're just blindly giving money because they're just plucking on the heartstrings. Like, they're plucking on your heartstrings and what do people do? Oh, GoFundMe, oh, dead kid, oh, let's just throw money blindly into it. It's not like, People get mad at people for donating to our platform. Well, you at least know what you're donating to. These people don't even know what they're giving their money for. You clearly don't. Because if that was the case, then why do you have two GoFundMe's totaling a total of $25,000 for one dead baby? Hashtag babies for benefits. Anyone? Help the Rivera family. And they're asking for this money to bury the kid. So the grandparents are asking for $10,000. And somebody named Kim Gob Cobble or whatever her name is, is trying to raise money for the mom to give her $15,000. But let me tell you the thing that really sucks. And guess that boy has marks on his face even in that picture. I want y'all to notice something. This mother didn't care enough about this kid. The fact that this mother has multiple kids and didn't know where one of her multiple kids was. Can anybody please tell me how that makes any sense at all? If we could just get out of our feelings just for a moment and let's just ask a reasonable question. If you have multiple children, how do you lose one of your multiple children? And he end up dead in a garbage can and your boyfriend end up arrested. But I'm gonna tell you guys, because we're actually gonna go into more screenshots. So if you guys are ready for those screenshots, here we go. Because I know a lot of y'all are wondering, well, why am I saying that the mom should be arrested too? Well, <laughs> I have an answer for you.
Let me see if I can show you guys a little something, something, something. First of all, let me show y'all a message from the mom. Like I said, she deleted a lot of her posts on her Facebook page, but we're going to get some of these out there. So thank you to the people who took screenshots. Here's part of what the mom said. She said, I don't even know where to begin. Today, I lost a piece of me, a piece of my heart, my soul, and today, I don't want to live. Bookmark that part in your brain. She said she don't want to live. But you have to live because you got more kids than just one kid to take care of, mom. But let's move on. I know I need to push on for my two babies left, but I feel like I just want to die. Letting all my friends and family who I have, excuse me, who I have, who cared that I tragically lost my two-year-old son today, Athian Emmanuel Rivera. You are my baby of my babies, my last born, my everything. I always knew you were something special, talented, sophisticated, handsome, everything a mother could wish for. It's too bad the world would never get a chance, and she meant two as in T-O-O, but she wrote two. But it's, it's too bad that the world would never get a chance to witness your perfection. I don't know how I'll ever get over this. You'll always be with me, baby boy. God, I can't even explain my pain. Please leave me be everybody. Some of y'all might be feeling a little sad for the mom, but maybe you won't be because I got a little bit more to show you guys. Let's bring up our next screenshot. This next one comes by way of the Cheyenne Police Department. It's going to be a little bit hard to see. I'm going to make this as big as I possibly can without stretching it out too badly. I know it's stretched a little bit. But this comes from the Cheyenne Police Department. And the mother said, Cynthia Sweeney, you know Kim Cobble don't even bother. I may not be a... I'm, I may not be a fucking perfect mother. And y'all can see that's what she, that's actually what she wrote. Mom wrote, said, I may not be a perfect fucking mother, but the only thing I'm guilty of is trusting the wrong person with my kids. Huh? Any one of you could pick the wrong childcare provider or family member and you could be in my shoes. But I want you guys to remember that this child did disappear in the custody of a family member or in the custody of child of a child care provider. Did he? Nope. He disappeared in the hands of her boyfriend, but let's keep going. My kids are my only reason for living. And all you people talk like I don't already feel like I have my son's death hanging over my head like I don't already want to die from losing a part of me and blame myself for this horrible death. I blame myself because every mother thinks they're doing what they need, getting places vetted and doing background checks and doing background checks and doing background checks. Let me, let me highlight that and show you guys that I'm not making this up. That's actually what she said. So if mom did a background check, like she said, where is it at? Where is it at? Right here. Mom said background check. Hashtag not my words. So if mom knew to do a background check, then guess what that also means? That also means that mom knew that her boyfriend was a violent felon and was already doing prison time and just got paroled. Y'all feel me on that? Please click the thumbs up. I'm going to say it again. If mom is saying you need to do things like properly vetting and doing background checks and checking things out, then that would also mean that the mom vetted her boyfriend, which is somebody that lays in her bed, lays in her house, and probably don't have a job and is around her kids and her all the time. So you would think 
that a logically thinking mother like her, who says that you should go through that process, would have done her own background check, right? Damn. <laughs> Can't get out of that one. That's her own words. But let's keep going. Using family members because you think you can trust them. You think you and your kids are safe. They face the same risk my son did. I'll never stop hating myself for leaving him with someone who did such a horrific thing. But seeing all these lies spread like I don't care for my children is more hurtful than anything. No, my baby didn't get out of the apartment and was wandering around. Let me read that again. The mom said, no, my baby did not get out of the apartment and was wandering around. That's mom's words. So that means somebody took the child, murdered the child, and dumped the child. And I want y'all to understand how definitively she said that. She said, for y'all information, no, my baby did not get out of the apartment and was wandering around. Now you have just taken out a big part of the equation. Now you're saying that somebody did it. Now the question is who? Who had custody of the kid? You did. Who else was around the kid? Your boyfriend. It's only two people that might have done this. And one of them is a violent felon who was known for choking people and kicking people in the face while they're down. Which should be actually attempted murder now that I think about it. I think people sh that kick people in the head while they're down and stomp them in the head should be charged with attempted murder. But we'll talk about that some other day. She said, no, I wasn't fucking hurting my baby boy and social services never involved because they thought that I was. But I did leave him with someone that I thought I could trust. Let me see if I can find the rest of that message. I'm not sure. But anyway, y'all get the majority of that message. I did get at least that piece of it. But I got a little bit more to show you guys. Give me a second. I want you guys to take a look at this and I want to give a shout out to Maria Valdez, excuse me, uh, Mar Maria Valdez. I said her name wrong, Maria Valdez. Here's what Maria Valdez wrote. Maria Valdez wrote to the mom, Casey Arona, that's the mom, said, what the cuss word, what do you mean you didn't know this dude was a demon? He was abusive towards you. So mom can't act like, thank you. Somebody said, who somebody said in the chat, she's full of it, period. Thank you. Thank you for saying that. Maria confirmed it and said that the boyfriend was abusive towards the mom. So the mom can't act like she didn't know that this dude was violent and including the fact that mom does background checks based on her own words. So she would have known that he already had a criminal violent past and brought that around her children. But let's keep going. She also says, why in the hell wouldn't you think he would abuse your babies? Good question. You need to quit lying. You knew exactly what the hell was going on, but you decided to turn the other cheek like nothing was going on. And that's why you feel such guilt because you knew you let this demon plague you, your home and your children's lives. This is the price for turning your back on your children. You put your children last and put this demon first. Oh my goodness. Where have y'all heard that before? Y'all heard me say stuff like that before, right? Advocate for children first. Beautiful, Maria, beautiful. She said, you put your children last and put this thug first. 
You need God and you need to quit drinking. Wow. How about that? Can everybody see that screenshot on the on the uh on the screen there? Everybody see that? Let me also say one more thing. I got one more screenshot to show you guys. Let me show y'all this. Let me blow this up on the screen. The same woman that put up that GoFundMe in support of the mom. So apparently, I guess this is mom's friend. And she said, this person, Kat Kessler, is trying to act like she's the mother's sister asking to donate to a cash app and spreading false information around. Please only donate to GoFundMe pages on Cassie's profile. She doesn't need to be dealing with this right now. So I want you guys to notice that nobody seems to be worried about getting a conviction against the man that murdered her kid. I want you to notice how none of them talked about this kid. They're only talking about who's getting the GoFundMe. How much is the GoFundMe? When are we going to get the GoFundMe? When are we going to be able to spend the GoFundMe? Right? Show you guys one more thing. And we'll wrap up with this story. On the uh, on one of the websites, it said, the family is in need of support for Athian's final expense, as well as other financial support due to not working during these difficult times. All love and prayers are welcome. Be supportive in this time of need and loss. I don't know what you guys get out of this. When I read it, I see something to me that says that this mother is irresponsible. This mother was not working. It says due to not working. Y'all can see it on the screen highlighted right there. Due to not working. So this GoFundMe is not to bury her son. It's not to give him a proper memorial. This GoFundMe is about mom not working. Now, how many of you guys feel like that's very odd? It seemed like nobody cared about this baby boy. Now, why did mom's boyfriend single this child out? I have no idea. And I don't understand how one of this woman's children disappear without the other two. I'm not sure. And I'm not saying that you know, that they should have disappeared. But I'm just saying, like, like, why did this, why did the mom allow this man to take one of her kids? Why would she even allow this man to be in her house? Why would she choose to date this man? Why would she ignore all of the red flags just because mom wanted some personal pleasures? And on top of that, why would you have at least three children and you act like you ain't got no money? but you continue to keep having kids. Why do broke people continue to keep procreating? Am I wrong for saying that? No, I'm not wrong. You know why? Because us as taxpayers in society, we are the ones paying for these social services. We are the ones paying for these people's section eight and food stamps. I believe as Americans that pay taxes in this country, we have every right to speak on the fact that the Democrats are continuing to fund irresponsible people. Yes. The last people that should be having kids is those who can't afford them. Those who don't have a job. They don't have a jobby, Freddie. Why are they getting to have all of these benefits? Am I wrong for saying that? We are supporting the most irresponsible people in our nation and we're wondering why we're regressing. We're wondering why it's getting worse. And that's because we continue to support irresponsibility. And on top of that, Yes, I believe that this mom knew what was going on 
And something about this doesn't seem right, but I want to remind you guys, because I truly, truly believe in my heart that this ain't the end of this. I believe that that baby boy is going to get some real justice. I hate the fact that her other children are going to have to get wrapped up in this as well, but I'm going to be honest with you guys. I think that the police are going to do their job, and shout out to the Cheyenne police. They're going to look further into this. They're going to realize that the mom saw something and did nothing. And the mom is going to be held responsible for putting her child inside of the thug lion cage at the thug zoo. And the thug lion mauled this kid's face off and then decided to throw this baby in a dumpster. That's unacceptable on every level. I'm sorry, there is no man that's so sexy that your children need to die. There is no penis on this earth that is worth you giving up the safety of your children. There is no man that is worth these children having to suffer and live in fear every single day just because your ass is lonely. Grow up. If you're that damn lonely and love thugs that much, then why don't you do it when you're single, when you don't have kids? When you have kids, it's no longer about you. Why don't people understand that? Why do people get mad and continue to post comments in my comment section? Oh, just Jay, you getting so mad, you going off. Who are you to go find me, police? This mother is going through some things. I'm sorry, yes, I don't care about the mother. I don't care about the boyfriend. We are the AFC, where we believe that babies' lives matter first. These children are the only ones that matter because they cannot speak for themselves, nor can they defend themselves against the tyranny of mom's boyfriend who was on parole and mom just decided to ignore that. And I'm going to tell you guys, that is such a lonely thing. And I want y'all to look at that trash can and I want y'all to think about that we see these trash cans all the time and we don't think anything of it. We just take our trash and dump it in there. And I want y'all to think about it because I know it might hurt your heart, but I want y'all to think about the fact that that little boy was dead inside of that trash can and people probably didn't know and might have tossed trash on top of this baby's body inside of that garbage disposal. That baby didn't deserve that. This little boy deserved to grow up and become something great. He was robbed of that opportunity. And to be honest with you, I'm not so sure that the mother or anybody else really put his wants and needs in any level of priority. But I think that we will have uh, more people arrested in this story. But once we get that information, like I said, we were able to update you guys um, the fact that they did arrest the boyfriend. They did officially charge him. So that's at least one person that's going to be held responsible. But I think there's more that has to be done. But what we cannot do in our society is watch people put their children in harm's way. Take their children, put them in the middle of a busy intersection. Take their children, throw them off a bridge. Take their children and place them somewhere and walk away. Take their children, leave them at home while you go to the club. Take your children with you to work and lock them in the car while you go work for eight hours. Take your children. You, you, you guys understand what I'm saying? Take your children and let your boyfriends Go on a car ride for 10 minutes and then bring your child back dead. And guess that really happened. Get life insurance on your children. Gerberlife.com is a very, very good website to be able to at least get some life insurance. It's not about, I don't have enough money. It's about the fact that we need to be more responsible about taking care of of our own lives because just as sure as everybody is going to be born, we'll eventually have an expiration date. We do not know the day, 
nor do we know the time, and everybody needs to be responsible for the deaths of their own family. Family needs to be able to take care of that, and insurance makes it very easy for us to pay a small monthly fee for us to be able to take care of that if the inevitable happens, whenever it happens. You can't just say, well, I'll get life insurance on my kid if they turn 25. Like, that don't make any sense. Not everybody gets an opportunity to live that long. Things happen, life happens, and we just don't know. And I think that we need to start being more responsible rather than playing on society's heartstrings. To mom's boyfriend, what's his name? Wyatt Earp, what's his boy's name? Not Wyatt Earp, his name is Wyatt Lamb. Wyatt Lamb. 27 years old and that dude ain't shit man that dude don't want to do nothing with his life and i hope he gets life in prison as far as this baby and that's probably one of my favorite pictures of him Athian rivera young prince r.i.p we will get justice for you I'm DJ Just J with the AFC, where we advocate for children first. It's always our priority, and I thank you guys for listening with an open mind and an open heart, okay? Thank you so much.